Okay, and welcome back to a new video by the Devscorts platform. I'm Johan, I will be your host in this video. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how you can build a custom uh, tab bar using Swift and Swift UI. Mm. The reason why I decided to build my own tab view, or tab bar view, is actually because I think the the, the Swift UI tab view system is a little bit uh, limited. And yeah, I just like to build uh, my own code, so that's why I thought let's make a YouTube video about it. So the first thing um, we I want you to do in the description there's a URL where you can download the assets. So there you can download uh, the starter project, the finished project, and you can find the assets. If you guys want to code alongside with me, just open the starter project and do the same as I do on screen. While I'm coding, I will be explaining to you guys what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. So, so that you are sure that at the end of the video, you actually understand, you actually understand what's happening and what we built and you will see some results. So, open up the starter project and inside the Swift UI custom tab bar, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this view router. So inside of your router, we're going to import Swift UI and under there, we're going to create a class of name view router, a super class of observe for well object. And in here, we're going to call on a published variable of current view. And it's going to be able equal to empty st of to string, so string of home. So go back to content view, and inside the struct content view, but above the var body, we're actually going to create an observed object, a variable called view router, and it's equal to view router to the view router class, which we, which we created in our last. Uh, file okay inside the body we're gonna delete the text and we're gonna implement a z stack so if you guys have seen my last tutorial on how, how to build the login screen using swift ui a z stack is actually a stack that allows us to stack that allows us to stack multiple stacks on top of each other so when you want to create a background use a, st yeah, use a z stack and inside the z stack you build a vertical or horizontal stack pretty cool so in here we're gonna call color of red, green, and blue, and we're gonna do two two four five dash two five five for red. For green it's gonna be two four five dash two five five, and last but not least two four nine dash two five five. And we're gonna give this an edge an edges ignoring safe area dot all. Okay, pretty cool. So we have like a really light white grayish color now. Under the color. We're gonna call it geometry, geometry reader. And the geometry reader actually is a reader that actually catches everything that's happening on the screen. So on the canvas, what you're working on. So after that, geometry in. And in here, we're gonna create a V stack. So a V stack is a stack that actually is gonna stack everything vertically under each other. And now, this V stack is also on top of the Z stack. So we have now a really nice background color in our, v st in our vertical stack as well. Inside here, we're gonna call spacer. And with the spacer, we actually have like um, an element that takes all the available space. So in this case, all the available space is the whole, the whole canvas. So the, the space is like the size of the whole canvas now. Later, we're going to add in second spacer, so it's actually going to divide the available space between between the two spacers. Pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to start with a little bit if-else logic, so that we can actually um, define our uh, views, that we can uh, check which view is selected, and on which view we're going to display what we want to display. So, if self dot view router dot current view is equal to oh, home we're gonna give this a text or string home under there 
else if self dot view router dot current view is equal to mm, agenda the text is going to be agenda under there else if oh else if self dot view router dot current view is equal to invoice then we're gonna display a text of invoice and last but not least else if self dot view router dot current view is equal to timer we're going to give this a text of timer pretty cool so let's see if our preview works and build so it works so we created the if else logic here um, we could also use like if we wanted we could do uh, we could have done this with uh, with an uh, enum as well but in this case we just use if else so if uh, if the view router to come view equals home we're going to display a text of home but else if self dot view router dot current view is equal to agenda we're going to display agenda with invoice and timer the same so now when we tab a button so for example the agenda button this little uh, piece of code Knows okay, the agenda button is selected, so I need to display a text of agenda. Pretty amazing, I know. So, on the if else, we're gonna escape, we're gonna create a second spacer. So now we have actually two spacers that is good that are gonna fill up the space that we have left over. And under the spacer, we're gonna create an h tag. So, h tag. Is actually a horizontal stack. So in here we're gonna this we're gonna actually gonna um, uh, stack everything horizontally. Horizontally. So in there we're gonna create an image of home dash silver, and we're gonna give this a frame of width twenty four and height twenty four. We're going to give this a dot aspect ratio of content mode dot fill. No, dot fit, sorry. Under there, we're going to create a padding of 20. Under the padding, we're going to give this an untap gesture. So, untap gesture. So with the untap gesture, we actually going to check if the image is tapped. So if somebody taps the image, do something. So in this case, self dot view router dot current view is equal to home. So this means when we tap this button, let's start this again. When we tap the when we tap the image or so the button in this case. The view router to current view is going to be home. Pretty cool. Okay. So, last thing we're going to add before on tap gesture, we're going to add dot frame of width. And here we're actually going to give this width and height calculated by the geometry reader. So, in this case, geometry dot size dot width dash four and we're going to use four because we need four buttons you will see later what that means so height of 90 pretty cool let's try to render our preview again why is it filled building oh sorry we need a dot here instead of a width okay now it works perfect so we're going to copy this image four times so one, two, and three, so that we have four images. 
and we're gonna actually gonna change some variables here. So from the image, we're gonna change home to calendar. Then we're gonna change the third one to invoice. And the fourth one, we're gonna change to stopwatch. So now we actually are gonna call the, um, the images that we need. And under, uh, before the frame, under those images, we're gonna call dot resizable. And from the third image as well, dot, dot resizable. And last but not least, dot resizable. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, don't forget the resizable. We don't need it for the first image because the first image already has like uh, has like a different size, and I think something went wrong with exporting those, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're going to change our view router dot current view. We need to change that as well. So the home first one is okay. The second one is going to be agenda. The third one is going to be invoice, and the fourth is going to be timer. So those are like the same, the same variables as we used here in the LFL statement. And the untap gesture knows if you tab it, it's going to be invoice. So I have to display all the information that's on the invoice. Pretty cool. So then we're going to escape to the second parentheses. And under there, we're going to call dot background of color. of red, green, and blue, and red is going to be a color of 19-255, then we're going to have green, that's going to be 18-255, and blue is going to be 88 dash Two five five. Under the background color, we're also going to call a frame, and in the frame we're going to call a width of geometry dot size dot width. I'm going to call a height of geometry dot size dot height divided by ten. Let's force this, let's see if it works. I'm sure it's gonna work. Gonna make some space here, okay. So what we did here, we gave the, um, the tab view, the tab bar, we gave it a background color of a really nice darkish blue. And we gave it a frame of width. So it's always gonna be the width of the geometry. And the height is going to be geometry dot size and divided by 10. So that means it also it's always going to stay on the bottom. And the last thing we're going to do, we're going to escape the last parentheses. So on the, the second one, we're going to go dot edges ignoring save area dot bottom. Um, just for your information, I, I experienced with Swift UI with Swift UI that's actually sometimes uh, it's crashing. I don't know why, but the preview is not always working. Okay, so sorry for the edit. My Xcode kept crashing, so I had to restart my Mac. But as you can see now, our tab bar works. So when we start up the the preview mode, now we have to wait. We have to start it up. Okay, so when we click here, those are here the buttons. Now it's on home, where we click agenda, invoice, and timer. Pretty cool, huh? So this is a little bit how, how you can create your own custom tab bar. It looks truly amazing. I think I made a mistake here. Oh, sorry, this one has to be invoice. Um, 
yeah, because my Xcode kept crashing, I was trying some other things out because maybe I made a mistake. But no, now it works. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Um, yeah, I hope you um, I hope you can use this code. Maybe you can make it even better. Just let me know in the comments. And if you if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And if you have any questions, I'm available in the in the comment section. I always try to uh, respond uh, in less than uh, 12 hours. And make sure to check out my uh, my website devscourse.com for written tutorials on Swift and Swift UI. And just just to inform you, uh, next week is Black Friday. And on Black Friday, I'm actually going to launch two new courses, an HTML CSS course and a Bootstrap 4 course. And they will be available for um, Black Friday prices. But I will update you guys uh, on Twitter as well. So thank you for watching and I see you next time. Have a good night.